is Professor Gavor. In this chapter, chapter 16, we're going to talk about enabling collaboration with IT. Basically, I think most of us already know something about this if we've ever used Google Drive or Google Docs. Uh, we know something about it if we're just starting at North Park to scratch the surface with Microsoft Teams. And I think both of those are great examples of how to, you know, using IT-enabled collaboration. And then it even gets more exciting depending on the company that you go to. Sometimes it's difficult, though, when you have many people working on one document. It's hard to write by committee, for example. And every once in a while, you might just want to say, okay, let's save this version of this strategic business plan as version 1.0. And uh, we'll start working on version 1.1. 1. 1. Uh, so all changes, you know, version 1 keeps track of all changes from, um, you know, May 1st until today, June 6th. And then version 1.1, 1. 1, we'll start with that last version 1.0, but then we'll add to and track changes until it starts getting cumbersome again. And then maybe we'll freeze that and open another one. Uh, I've done that with only writing with three people, and it can get out of hand. You almost need to put one person in charge of it, accepting all the changes, and or else the collaboration can get out of hand, and you don't know where you were or where you're going. So let's go through these slides. Um, I don't think it's the best chapter because of, you know, it's 2015. So this is two chapters in a row where maybe there's more stuff happening now than when this was written. So, but we're talking about virtual interaction as becoming the rule of today's workplace. Certainly it is, especially in, uh, you know, this is a, we're teaching this class in the uh, COVID-19 pandemic era. And certainly, however we use Google Docs before, however we use Microsoft Teams before, we're using it big time now. Zoom, uh, how we're collaborating with uh, Microsoft Office 365, all that stuff is being really put through the paces these days. Uh, a large percentage of employees accomplish their daily work through collaboration technologies. Well, certainly email, instant messaging, video conferencing, Twitter, Facebook. They haven't even included the collab real collaboration technologies of the Google Drive, Microsoft Teams kinds of things. Uh, business and IT managers, are, I guess, struggle to quantify the real value. Well, the real value is, especially if you're designing automobiles, for example, I think the automotive industry have been doing 24-7 or 24-5 uh, around the clock kind of collaborations on their design. If uh, you work for Ford and you're designing something in... Um, you know, from eight to eight to six in the Eastern time zone of the United States during the normal workday. As the work ends, you may have uh, a handoff to someone in another part of the world where it's just becoming morning, uh, possibly China, possibly India, possibly wherever. And they can continue designing the car and doing the design work, and you've transferred the files, you've updated them with what you've done. Maybe there's an hour of overlap, but you just keep going, and then they they would overlap with you the next morning when they're done. So maybe people work 12-hour shifts four days a week and basically have 24 times four days collaboration, and uh, you know they get a lot more done quicker. So... They say collaboration software represents one-fifth of most organizations' technology budgets. And business leaders are uncertain of its business value. I don't know about that anymore. I'm not going to argue with the one-fifth part, but I think business leaders are not uncertain of its business value. Uh, I think even now, especially with this pandemic, we realize, that, wow, we have the tools to get a lot of stuff done without being face-to-face. -face. And how do you do it? Collaboration software and file manipulation, all of that. So why collaborate? Cost savings, effectiveness, accessibility of people, accessibility of information, flexibility, shared files, um, everybody being on the same page, being able to uh, talk at a moment's notice, 
mean, if we want to talk about collaboration, I write uh, probably two, two letters of recommendation a month. You know, sometimes it might be zero for two months, and then I write five letters the next month or six letters a month after that. But um, I don't just write the letter. I have the person on the phone, hopefully FaceTime, because I like to see faces. They like to see my face as I'm writing the letter. If I have a question, I ask them the question right then. I don't have to waste time coming up with a draft, emailing them with a list of questions. They respond with the questions. Maybe I have to clarify the questions and send it back. So it could take a week to write a letter that way. This way, in 20 minutes, using a, a template and a format that I have, I can write a, a letter of recommendation in like 20 minutes with the person on the phone. They can answer any questions I might have because my memory is not 100%. And I don't know what extracurricular activities that for undergraduate they might have been involved in. Were they working? Were they not working? How many classes? I can't remember. Did you have two classes or three classes from me? That kind of thing. What was it you want to be again? You want to be, you know, you look to be a general manager of a multinational. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Or, oh, no, professor, you got me confused with someone else. Uh, this is what I was trying to do. So it works very quickly. That's just a very simple example of where collaboration uh, can work. And what do we use? Did I use shared documents, Google Docs? None of that. No. I used basically a telephone. But they were there and doing it real time with me. So the whole point of this is for efficiency, effectiveness, time, and cost savings. And then at the point of what we're all trying to do is get more done faster, increase our productivity, basically. So the top line value, the collaboration across an organization with customers and suppliers and other third parties will strengthen the ability to identify new business opportunities. Yes, it also gets business transacted faster and more effectively and more efficiently. Um, if you are a customer of Walmart, you have an 18-month rolling forecast with them, and you collaborate with that with them on an ongoing basis to update that 18-month rolling forecast. Obviously, if it's right now June of 2020, what's 18 months? So if I had 18 to 6, I get uh, month 24. So next June plus 6 would be next December, December of 2021. I do I know what I want to sell at Walmart? And, December of 2021? No, but we're starting to think about it now. We've got our preliminary forecast out there. And as it gets closer, we'll refine it and refine it and refine it and hopefully have a good plan by the time we get there. So that's what, uh, that's a collaboration that's not about building business, but about making the business that we have already more effective and more efficient and more productive. Cost savings, definitely. If you can do things faster, quicker, with higher productivity, you save time and money. Effectiveness. Well, what does effectiveness mean? Um, you know, it can make help people be a seamless team. I mean, it was more effective for me to write a letter of recommendation with the person that I'm writing the letter of recommendation for on the phone with me. The communication was easier. Not only did we save time, but the communication was made much easier. The whole process was facilitated <clears throat> with more ease. The accessibility of people. Uh, clearly, if you know, you have to have set touch points for this to happen. But the whole point is arranging it, making it easier for people to communicate with each other by voice, by video, by written, by text, by whatever. Sometimes it can get out of hand if you have too many modes of communications, of communication, excuse me. So that's got to be managed a little bit. Accessibility of information. If I have, I mean, that's the whole point of Google Docs, shared document folders, period. It's the whole point of Microsoft Teams, shared document folders. To a certain degree, Canvas is that way. If we all have the same information, everybody has access to it instantaneously. If I change it right now, I don't have to email it to everybody. If it's a shared folder, I can email. I just made a change. Check it out. The change is there instantly. If we're all on the phone, 
you can hear me. You can even see me if it's a video call. Make the change and then save it where you know where the document is. It's a thousand times better. We do it and don't even know we're doing it these days. You know, because maybe you hadn't really grown up in a world where it wasn't so, where this was like such a novel new concept. Flexibility. Well, you have flatter, more networked and collaborative structures because most companies that have ERPs, they're already into this collaborative kind of style because everybody has access to the same general information in the company at the same time. So you don't need as many people. You don't need uh, the depths of organizational hierarchy. We had a section on a shared service organization that you can't do that without some sort of collaborative system where the system's doing all, a, a lot more of the work. So the range and scope of collaboration. So if you have individuals that are working on transactions, they're collaborating on site, they're using electronic communication, internal teams are doing some routine activities, they're collaborating perhaps virtually because they might not be co-located. Maybe instead of just electronic communication, uh, they're doing video conferencing. Ooh, it's getting exciting. Uh, I'm not sure this idea of community of interest, they've been talking about it forever, that it's ever taken off, but it's somewhere between an internal team and an organization. Uh, and maybe it could be. We had a community of interest uh, in Colgate Paul of when I worked there. The community of interest was all of the logistics personnel, and then we had a sub community of interest in there, people that ran warehouses. And we would have virtual meetings with them, so we'd have ad hoc unstructured initiatives, we had uh, annual conference together, and then we had projects in which then internal teams would collaborate with international teams, and blah, 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 get stuff done. Organizations, I guess, are looking at innovation, but that's limiting, I think. How are they collaborating? Mobile? I don't know what that even means. Uh, I guess it's not going line ac across, maybe it's not going across. Uh, customers and others. Once you get to the outside, you have dynamic real-time things happening, like with that um, collaboration on the uh, agreed-upon forecast with Walmart in a rolling 18-month format. And you could be doing that globally with Walmart globally. It could be done just in the United States. So you have to have a sophisticated means of sharing that information and having a platform that people can use. Well, components. You need people, you need program, you need processes, you need platforms. What are we talking about when we're talking about people? We're talking about people with strong, everybody in this, how can you work these days and not have strong communication skills? So as a manager, and you're all studying to be managers, you should be in, uh, encouraging your people and to create that collaborative environment instead of solely monitoring them on productivity by itself. It needs to be part of a coherent program, and sometimes collaborations can be ad hoc, and need, you can set it up, and it goes. Other times, it's just an ongoing way of doing business. Sales and operations planning, for example, those of you that took 5411 or are about to take it, we study something called sales and operations planning. That's a very collaborative method. And then, guess what? If you're going to do something collaboratively, all work is a process. Again, you can't talk process to the quality guy, um, being me, without talking about processes. So processes that support, also, if all work is a process, you need a well-defined process in whatever collaborative system you're trying to work in. And then platforms, the technology involved, the, the tools I guess you probably need some standards. The standards come with the business process, of course. And this is the means through which people work. The platform could be MS Teams. Let's do this thing through MS Teams. I have texting. I have shared files. I have instant video conferencing. I can set up my teams in a second. Uh, the entire, you know, this being June 2020 when I'm recording this, uh, North Park is trying to figure out how to open in the fall 
in this COVID environment. And we've been using Microsoft Teams. We set up Teams, we set up sub teams, uh, and they're all Microsoft Teams. We're sharing folders. It's working quite effectively. So what's the role of IT? Well, IT is, if you look at it, is probably involved certainly in the selection and adaptation of the platform. So you've got to be involved in that. But again, it's a joint business IT decision to do that. And then depending on what kind of collaboration you're working in, IT could be involved in any of this. So collaborative technology. A single technology spectrum should support communication. Uh, communication technology should be uh, ubiquitous, means available everywhere, reliable, secure, and integrated. Well, we're, I, we tried to use Skype for Business. That evolved into Microsoft Teams. Skype for Business was horrible. Microsoft Teams is wonderful. My old company, I just listened to a presentation from the global head of supply chain. They were able to adapt faster than many companies uh, to the to the pandemic and and maintain their supply chains uh, and keep their inventory levels reasonable through this whole pandemic. How did they do it? They didn't use Microsoft Teams. They use Google Hangouts of all things. Now I know they have a collaborative software like Microsoft Teams or something like that, probably integrated already into their IT offering, but for some reason, they decided Google Hangouts was easier to use. They actually contacted Google and created a secure Colgate Palm Olive only hub or, you know, cluster for this. And they've been using it like crazy. It's, you know, like any of these things. Like you can access it from your computer. You can access it from a pad or your phone, whatever. You could have video conferences, you could have audio conferences, you can share files, it's integrated with Google Docs, any number of things you could do here. Information access and management. This is the role of IT. If you're going to do all this, you've got to make sure that it's all set up so that people can share files and only people that can see the file or that should be seeing the files actually can see them. Um, you probably want to set up whatever parameters are inside of the the software that you use to make sure if someone is the lead person on a file, they can set, you know, like you can in Google Docs, I could create a file that I could share with people or and they could read only or I could share files with people that they could change themselves. All those things and you have to train people to be able to understand and use those things. So where the an optimal number of databases, data management platforms, intranets support this access. It's not as complex as it sounds because a lot of third parties are now providing these, like from Google Hangouts and Docs, that whole Google platform, the whole Microsoft Teams platform, and there are no doubt other ones that you could use as well. I think Zoom is probably trying to head in that direction too. Uh, security and risk. Well, IT is in charge of, since we're talking about cyber, you know, a lot of collaboration software is enabling things to work in cyberspace, well, you have to have cybersecurity. And IT is predominantly responsible for that, often as a shared responsibility with finance. Finance somehow always gets the business side um, responsibility for cybersecurity. Uh, technology integration. Well, yeah, it should all integrate. It's really hard to toggle between Microsoft and Google. I find that cumbersome. But within Google Docs, no problem. Within Microsoft Office and MS Teams, no problem. So you've got to, I mean, you've just got to acknowledge that. What kind of file types, what kind of platforms you want to use for everything. And if you have Outlook, you know, North Park is pretty much all Microsoft. It's all integrated. It's all integrated. And it works out pretty good. So the first steps for facilitating effective collaboration. You need a coherent vision. Plan for adoption. Start with specific fundamentals. Establish principles of behavior. And gradually move behind the, beyond the firewall. 
which people are reluctant to do, I suppose. So what are you trying to accomplish? What does the business wants to do? What are you trying to accomplish? And what kind of technology best supports it? You have to have a unified strategy and business model, tools, and experiments. Well, if you're going to create something from scratch, you need to do all that stuff. You still need to know what you want, but look at existing platforms. And I'm going to stick with Microsoft. I'm going to stick with Google. I'm sure there are others. Um, what are the capabilities I want to start with, and how can it grow with my expanding needs, if I have expanding uh, plan for adaptation. Well, do you start everything at once? I mean, it's interesting. All of a sudden, the pandemic hit at North Park. Within like a, a day of, uh, of uh, we're officially in pandemic and moved all the classes online. Next thing you know, hey, by the way, we have Microsoft Teams. What's that? I started using it. It was so easy to use. Next thing you know, I'm using it all the time. Our teams are using it all the time. It's ridiculously easy. We have our faculty senate meetings on Microsoft Teams because it's just so easy to use. So what you start with, if it's if it's got the right kind of human interface and natural design that people are easily able to access, people can grow with it. How do we adopt it? Well, this was almost instantaneous. Uh, people probably had Zoom and were having a Zoom conference here or there. Uh, next thing you know, I, I imagine the 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 use of of Zoom skyrocketed with the pandemic. Start with specific fundamentals. Well, you start with what do you start with? Hey, let's have a video conference. Okay, let's have. Um, hey, we can uh, create a team. Oh, let's create a team in Microsoft Teams. That's what it's called. Gee whiz, and I don't have to like type everybody's name in all the time. And every time we want to have a video conference, uh, let's schedule a series of meetings. Next thing I know, it's on my Outlook calendar, which is synced with the Microsoft Teams calendar. How cool is that? Uh, and then here I want to send you a file. You can have a chat during a video conference. You can put the file there. Or you can put the file in the files folder of the Teams page. Whoa, so it was easy to adapt to, it was easy to learn. So you want to start with basics and grow from there as it applies to anything. I would think if um, I was a project manager and using project management software and running several projects, something like, Mark, and the people weren't all co-located, you know, when, when we used to do projects before we had any of this and before we had computers, the project manager would be assigned the conference room if it was an important project, which would be called the war room for that project. They would have pages and a flip chart taped to the walls with the plan and this and that and everything you could think of and issues to manage and all this stuff. Well, guess what? Your war room is now your Microsoft Teams location. It's your Google Hangouts. It's or Google Hangouts for business, I guess. So whatever it is you want to do. So start small, expand. And I think this pandemic shows how quickly, at least I learned that we can expand with Microsoft Teams. Uh, establish principles of behavior. Well, you know, it started where everybody was on video and then no one was on video. Now only the people that are, <laughs> that are speaking kind of turn their video on. Uh, because you can, you realize that if you're on video, you have to look intent all the time. If you're not on video, you can be doing email and other things and no one notices. Um, it's just a, 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 a fact. If you have a meeting of 30 people, rather than just butt in, if you have a meeting of three people, anybody can butt in and just you could talk like you're having a conversation. But if you have 30 people, you might want to have everybody keep their microphones mute, if you want to say something, raise your hand. All of these things have a hand raising feature. And then you have someone paying attention, especially if I'm presenting and I'm using full screen. I could have another person, uh, Mark, uh, you know, Joe wants to ask a question. Uh, Serena wants to ask a question. Oh, yes, yes, I'm sorry. Please go ahead. And then they take their hand down after they're done. I mean, it's, it works out very well. 
Um, so that's in those collaborative meeting kinds of activities. If you have a collaborative document you're all working on, the protocols there sometimes are even more important, like I outlined earlier. You may have versions of it. You may have a person in charge of the document that keeps an official version of the document and a shadow of it in the collaborative space where anybody can make changes, and then that person can make evaluate which changes he wants to incorporate into the master document or not. Um, a variety of things. You know, you, people can... Uh, you know, you could send out a, uh, an email, a PowerPoint that says, everybody on my team, all my sub uh, committee heads, or all the people on my team, uh, I have this presentation, and you'll see on pages 7 through 20, uh, each, one of your sub, each one of your responsibilities has to have some input. Um, I'm sharing this document out there. You go and put your input in by three days from now, and because I have to present to the board, four days from now, or six days from now, or something like that. Don't change any of the other stuff, because that's my responsibility. Only change the page you're responsible for. Well, I could send the presentation to everybody. They could just send me their page back, or I could, if I trust the people enough and we're well adapted at working at this, they can just go in and change the master document and hopefully not screw it up. Uh, I write a uh, newspaper articles of a uh, Armenian Youth Federation annual sporting event that they have uh, Labor Day weekend every year. I have a committee of, uh, you know, f uh, three reporters and uh, three photographers. I'm both a photographer and a reporter. And we set it up on um, Dropbox. And we have collaborative folders there and everybody puts their own folders in. We have a system that, you know, we say, you know, um, a tennis article in progress, a tennis article um, draft, and then tennis article final. So I'm responsible for writing about tennis. I write the tennis article in progress. As soon as it's ready to go, I change the status of it. Uh, I change the name of it by saving it as another file as tennis article draft. Other people go in and, uh, you know, the editor of the newspaper then goes in, makes edits, makes changes, collaborates with me. Are you okay with these changes? Sure. And then we change it final. Anything that's final is already done, ready to go. We move that into the final folder and uh, we put the paper, you know, this 20-page color supplement uh, to this newspaper together relatively easily. It's all done with this collaboration software. Uh, when we talk about the firewall, and includes the identification of what information cannot, can and cannot be shared with outside organizations. So collaboration internally is one thing. Collaboration with Walmart, I don't know, do you want, you know, you want, don't want the Walmart to accidentally see all of your cost structure for all of your products, even though they probably suspect what they might be if they were had to make a guess, but you want to make sure that you only share the information with them that you want to share with them. So that firewall is, is critical, not only to prevent hackers from getting into your system, but in having uh, effective communication with your own business partners, be they customers or suppliers. So collaboration is a cool part of business. It's com I think it's not as complex as it probably was at first. It requires some organizational savvy. It requires a mindset, but I think we've all kind of got to that. I think this pandemic has helped people get there even faster. Um, it's not only the software. It's always the business process and the software together. I can't emphasize that more. I think I've emphasized that maybe in every chapter we've covered here. So it's a holistic strategy that integrates business goals and technology potential. That sentence, that, that phrase right there may sum up the whole course. Thank you very much. We'll talk again soon.